Today we'll be kicking things off with your weekly dose of Starship news. Then we'll briefly go over the status of SpaceX's previous missions booster for GPS-3, discuss the next missions to come, and finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Things are once again about to heat up in Boca Chica, Texas, as SpaceX continues on their path to progress to colonizing Mars. The Starship construction facility is well on its way to becoming a fully-fledged Starship factory, turning out over a handful of prototype vessels in less than a year. Elon has stated multiple times in the past that making the Starship assembly line is much harder than building Starship itself. And while SN6 has already been built and an SN7 prototank has already been tested, SN5 is at the test site down the road where it currently awaits for boom time. Road closures were scheduled for today through next Wednesday, and it was expected through paperwork filed with Cameron County that SpaceX would conduct a static fire of the vehicle's single offset Raptor engine today. But that closure and its backup days were canceled last night. But wait, there's more. Here's where it really gets exciting. See that mass simulator sitting atop SN5? Well, the last time we saw one of these was on SN4, and if you think back, she was supposed to make a 150 meter hop but decided to perform a rapid unscheduled disassembly instead. That box contained a couple rolls of 301 stainless steel, possibly to simulate the weight of a nose cone, or maybe just because a single Raptor engine is just built too good. So with that in mind, before the schedule was shifted, the road closure for Monday was supposed to be for another 150 meter hop, something we haven't seen since the days of Starhopper in August of last year. But again, that's not the plan anymore. It looks like Monday will now be the static fire, but if everything goes well, we can expect the hop to come soon after, maybe even as early as Thursday. More dome parts have been spotted being assembled at the Starship factory. Not sure at the moment what Starship or test tank they may be for, and other parts have been seen just this morning in the mid bay next to SN6. So that could be the genesis of stacking for SN8 or maybe even 9. Nomad on nasaspaceflight.com recently shared these images of discarded heat shield attachment test rings SpaceX must have been experimenting with lately. And the new super heavy high bay began assembly just a few days ago using that big blue crane SpaceX is renting. What a beast. And progress still continues at the launch site for the super heavy boosters pad. All right, moving on, I got a quick little post edit add in here. This happened as I was uh, making this video. I thought it was really cool. I wanted to share it of astronaut Christopher Cassidy, AKA Astro Seal, taking us on a trip of his view of the Demo 2 launch from the space station. Great pictures right over the pad. Come on. It was pretty interesting to watch and here's just a little sample of it. Get some, Doug and Bob, here we go. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. Yeah! SpaceX Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. T-minus 30 seconds. Get it, get it, get it. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T-minus 15 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon and Yeah! Godspeed, Bottom Dog! That's right at about 12 minutes when Dragon will separate. <laughs> you silly cosmonauts. Moving on to some Falcon news, meow. Meow! Last week, we really didn't get to see the drone ship landing of the new GPS 3 booster during its mission, but SpaceX did us a solid and followed up with some images captured by the cameras on station. And included one of the Octagrabber doing its thing, anchoring the booster down to the deck so she doesn't tip over, like a drunken sailor. That booster then made its way back to the Cape, where it arrived on July 4th, and US Launch Report was there to capture the retraction of its landing legs, when an accidental mishap caused one of the legs to slam onto the drone ship deck after a winch line snapped. However, these sort of incidents were tested in the past, and everything is expected to be well with the booster. All legs were eventually retracted, and the booster went on its way. On Tuesday, SpaceX's next Falcon 9 rocket went vertical at Pad 39A for their next rideshare mission, Starlink 9. However, the launch was scrubbed about 10 minutes before liftoff due to the Florida weather. SpaceX continued the countdown on their end for data collection only. But hey, now we have something to look forward to. We got a new launch date and time set for tomorrow at 10.54 a.m. Eastern Time. And if you want a viewing buddy, I'll be live right here on my channel. It's fun for ages 8 to 80. Join us. And it looks like they may attempt a fairing catch, maybe? I'll also be live on Tuesday the 14th for the Anasis mission, South Korea's first military communications satellite. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. 
A NASA independent review team has completed major reviews that came after Boeing's Starliner crew capsule failed to reach the ISS last December and made 80 recommendations to address the issues. The spacecraft experienced software and communications issues during its 2019 mission, and while a full list of recommendations is company sensitive and proprietary, general categories include the need for more testing and simulations, assessments of all software requirements, process and operational improvements, software updates, and hardware modifications. Last week, Boeing tested Starliner's parachute system at White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. To prove the spacecraft's landing system performs well under dynamic abort conditions and simulated a main parachute failure, which is why you only see two mains here and not three. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but I want to thank my eccentric members and patrons for their support of these episodes. If you'd like to do the same and receive access to more SpaceX news and other shenanigans in your week, check out the description for links below. And while you're down there, please also show your support for the local contributors as well. You all have a nominal evening, and until we meet again tomorrow, Godspeed.